Creating believable digital humans are often viewed as one of the highest peaks to reach when working with computer graphics. And when attempting to blur the lines between the digital and the real, the need of innovative methods and technology is raised to obtain the most significant subtleties. Welcome to part three of our three-part series where we dive into some of the techniques and technology the demo team used during the production of the real-time demo, Enemies. In this third part, we look at how the demo team is and have been exploring and developing methods for creating believable digital humans. In the first two parts of the series, we looked at everything supporting the experience, the environment, the lighting and the camera. And now we want to take a deep look into the digital human in Enemies. But first we want to dive into the team's past projects to understand the steps that led to the decisions and techniques they use today. In 2016, the team created Adam, a short featuring a human trapped in a robot's body. In many ways, this was a first step for the team on the quest of depicting human behavior and their portrayal. For Adam to shine through the robotic enclosure, a great deal of attention was put on details like human proportions, range of motion, detailed eye animations, and even a voice that felt real. And this was the beginning for the team to develop a newfound awareness of the importance of believability over realism. This continued well into the production of The Heretic, which became a whole new milestone for the team's pursuit in creating believable digital humans, but also introduced a whole new set of challenges and a confrontation with the so-called Uncanny Valley. The Uncanny Valley refers to a tipping point in human perception in regards to characters that portray human qualities. In other words, when approaching human likeness, our brains expect near perfection, especially if you want the viewer to immerse in a story. The Heretic Project was the team's first step into creating a real digital human, and a considerable amount of work was put into addressing the challenges that came with that undertaking. Although the battle had just begun, progress under the Heretic became the building block for developing methodology, technology, and new tools. And one of the first parts for the team to tackle is the area of our appearance most susceptible to the uncanny valley, the face. The human face is the gateway to emotions, feelings, and as social beings, we are extremely sensitive to the tiniest of imperfections. Our subconscious picks up on so many small details that when we are presented with imperfect characters, we don't even know why it feels wrong. It just does. Creating static digital humans and pushing them to near perfection is today fully possible. And when seen in a static position, they can be indistinguishable from the real thing. However, as soon as movement is added, the equation changes and the return to the uncanny valley seems all too close. One method involves using an advanced full-featured facial rig that can capture all the subtle muscle deformations and skin stretching. And then motion capturing that performance and applying final artistic corrections by an experienced animator is what defines the industry standard procedure for capturing the human face. This was also an approach initially explored during the heretic production. However, since the workings of a facial rig are in a sense based upon mathematical interpolations between extreme facial expressions, every step between is no longer something correctly simulated or representing the actor's actual anatomy. This interpolation or blending between extremes doesn't account for the vast complexity and range of subtleties taking place as we move our face. Instead, it becomes a very synthetic or mathematical transition and we as humans register this transition and see it as uncanny. Rather than relying on a facial rig, the team began looking into capturing the actress full performance as a volumetric 4D video. In theory, this approach seems ideal for recreating an actor's likeness and performance. It stays as close to the ground truth as possible by capturing the entire facial movement and performance without the need of any in-betweens or other compromises to the movement itself. This method captures simultaneously the movement of neck, head and face of the performing actor in a 360 degree video volume. And it generates a volumetric video made of separate 3D objects with each step representing a frame captured in the performance. However, this technique comes with its own set of challenges and a new set of tools have to be utilized to assist with the production. To create a high quality digital character, the team first has to capture a high resolution model of the actor. Today, there are a variety of vendors on the market who can provide scanning services and deliver the necessary data. In the case of enemies, the demo team turned to the UK based company, Infinite Realities, an industry innovator with a long row of high end productions under its belt. 
They specialize in developing and building photometric and motion scanning systems, and they have been a close and valued collaborator ever since the digital human work done on the heretic. The capture was conducted at Infinite Reality's volume with a special rig of cameras photographing the actor from every angle and with a controlled lighting setup. These captured images are then used to create a high resolution photogrammetry model of the actor. The model is then cleaned up and brought to a production ready quality. At the same time, the actress' performance is captured as a 4D volumetric video, and the aim is then to wrap the high-quality model around the sequence of animated meshes. To perform this task, the team turned to the Armenia-based company Faceform, another long-time and valued collaborator, developing industry-leading topology transfer tools that help create digital characters based on the 3D scans of real actors. Their set of specialized tools, particularly one of their more recent tools, RAP4D, was used to handle the volumetric video and transfer the animated data from one to the other. It works by tracking areas in the skin of the actor, matching it frame by frame. And to assist with this process, markers can be drawn on the actor's face. And to further develop a near pixel perfect match, the team used optical flow tracking to analyze the movement of the textured skin on a per pixel basis. And the finished wrapping process can then be exported as a simple sequence of 3D objects, one for each frame of the performance and played back in Unity. It is important to underline how this type of facial animation allows for the character to appear and feel human, even when unshaded or artificially painted. With that said, developing believable skin is an essential part of the process to get right, as it plays a huge role in recreating a natural human. Because when we most often look at other people, we are faced with their natural skin and our subconscious registers lots of tiny complexities in how our skin behaves and looks. Enemies builds on the skin techniques developed for the character in The Heretic. It uses a purpose-built skin shader and maps extracted from the initial scanning process at Infinite Realities. The maps extracted include an albedo map captured in neutral light to get the raw color of the skin and a type of reflectance map to be used as smoothness for the skin. A key advancement, however, for enemies was the implementation of a reflectance map that alters the specularity and behavior of the fresnel of the skin itself. To develop these maps, a special process of polarizing the light developed by Inciprical and Infinite Realities enabled the use of custom maps that give a subtle but significant change to the way light bends around the model. Skin can be a complex thing to shade naturally, as it is composed of so many layers of varying characteristics. And as we are developing digital characters, we continue to create models and methods for how best to represent a certain characteristic. And skin is one of those areas of the process where it seems like there's always one more layer to perfect. The final model that is wrapped and then animated can be quite high in resolution, but still not high enough to create the kinds of deformation needed for wrinkles and skin stretching. And to accommodate this, the team used different facial expressions, also known as facts, that were extracted during the initial high resolution model capture. The team then went through a task of artistically and technically merging and painting specific parts of these maps into something that could be used as a wrinkle map. With these maps, a special shader was then developed that calculated tension maps based on the deformation of the model's vertices, which could then activate and display the wrinkle maps. Key to the shader was the separation between compression and stretching, blending and revealing the custom wrinkle maps underneath. We often say that the eyes are the gateway to the soul, and to create a believable human staring back at you, Unity has created a universal eye shader. This shader creates pupils with depth and corneas that refract what's behind them, which gives eyes their distinct look and feel. Something key to the feeling of eyes, however, is in the way that they rest in the human head. They sit freely and can rotate, but are still socketed in and kept in place. And if you look closely at the transition between eyelid and eye, it's not quite sharp. It is in fact a soft transition, this is because of a thin layer of liquid always resting between eye and eyelids. And this creates that feeling that the eye somehow flows continuously with the rest of the face. To create a similar effect, the artist on the team created a small mesh to wrap around the eye to blend the normals between eye and eyelid. Without this feature, you will notice a very artificial and digital hard separation that takes away from that glance from the eye we are so used to. Another feature of the eye shader that is so often overlooked is correct shadowing around the eyes as the lids are closing. Providing the right type of occlusion helps make the eyes feel more dimensional and more part of the head itself. This is especially important when creating real-time characters where shadowing techniques can't always be perfect, especially with smaller details. And the team used a very similar feature for the teeth of the character to create the right type of shadowing around them as the mouth opened and closes and the lips stretch around it. 
The hair of the character and enemies is a big part of the feeling and sway of the performance. During the production of enemies, the team developed a brand new Unity hair system that allows for any groom authored in a DCC package like Wig, XGen or Houdini to be imported and simulated in real time. From the DCC package, the groom is exported as an Olympic cache and is converted into a hair asset in Unity. That hair asset can then be controlled by a hair instance, which provides a broad range of simulation settings and parameters that can alter the groom. The artist can in Unity adjust the stiffness and dampening of the hair to get the right flow and motion. And with real-time gravity, the hair can respond to movements and objects around. The hair can also be dynamically broken down into subsections like LODs to group the groom and flow of the hair which can offer great scalability and control. But beyond the fact that the hair system can create believable hair simulations in real time, it can also be put to use for attaching eyelashes, eyebrows and peach fuzz to the character's face. Peach fuzz are the tiny soft hairs covering the entire human body and normally it is not something we really notice. But it is something we really feel, especially at the edges of the face, as the small hairs catch the surrounding light and then broadens and softens the rim light of the character. The softening of the light around the character totally changes the way the character settles into the background. Although the character is seated, there was still a significant amount of work required to capture the motion of the body. Typically when you capture the facial performance of an actor with a 4D volumetric video, the actor has to remain very still so the alignment can be eased. This however creates a discontinuity between the facial performances and the physical performance of the actor's body which once again makes the character feel uncanny. If not done properly, you might end up with the floating head unaligned with the rest of the body. Therefore, during the capture of the facial performance, the actor was directed in a manner where neck and head movements were not excluded from the performance, thus potentially risking subsequent problems with occlusion and data inaccuracy. But since these movements especially affect the deformation of muscles and tissue on the neck itself, by pushing the limits of the 4D volume and allowing for a broader range of movement, the team was hoping to get a more natural performance in the final 4D sequence. This pushing of limits creates a scenario where the team had to essentially counter animate the moving head back into a neutral position. So it would all line up to an underlying rig, which would then allow for loose parts like teeth and eyes to follow the movement. The underlying rig was animated using a full body motion capture performance and this was then used as a point to align the 4D facial animation. And specifically in enemies, the clothing became a way to bridge the gap between being seated in the environments, the hands interacting with the chessboard and the head and neck. The dress and simulation was done in Marvelous Designer where tailoring of the garment ensured correct seams, bindings and folds as it all affects the way the cloth drapes and moves. For enemies, the team sought out to specifically capture their fingers in an even higher fidelity. So they reached out to Mocap Lab, a specialized mocap studio in Paris, where they were able to track every finger and digit to capture highly precise and natural movement of the hands and fingers. The intricate action between the actor's hands and the chest pieces is one of the elements that once again helps sell the believability of the entire character. During the production of enemies, the team had many learnings and insights about the unique relationship between art and technology. Throughout Unity and the demo team's history, they have been uncovering the power of creation in real time, and they have been pushing the technologies that help us portray human likeness. And enemies have helped bring the team to a new level of creating believable characters with astonishing new technologies and discoveries. This brings this third part of the series to an end. And as the team looks towards the future, we hope to share more in-depth content like this soon again. For now, we hope that this video was inspiring and insightful. Thanks for watching.